Well, we're across the border today in sunny Lancashire. Well, we were promised sun, but that's what you get in Lancashire. It is sunny in Yorkshire. We're here today with RS Electrics, the Fit and Anderson A2 EV charger, which anyone who has followed this channel from the very start will remember this is the first EV charger that we ever installed. Let's just have a quick look at the supply to this property, see what we're dealing with today. Interesting thing here we've got to look at. Um, a double pole isolator has been fitted, which is great when it comes to isolating the supply. However, they've only switched the line conductor. So we haven't seen that before. Let us know what you think of that. Have you seen that before? Uh, it's a PME supply and that's easily uh, handled by the Anderson charger that's got the inbuilt pen fault protection. So all in all looks a pretty straightforward job. We're not going to try and ram anything else in here because uh, obviously we've only, I think we've only got two screws holding that uh, in place. So I think we'll just try and leave as much of that alone as possible. When it comes to EV charging, it's all about location, location, location. Putting the charger in that ideal location where you're going to park the car and there's an available power supply. Now the first thought on this project here was to put the charger in or outside the garage. However, the existing power supply at the garage wasn't up to the job and it'd be a pretty substantial job to upgrade it, knock on effect back to the existing consumer unit, having to dig up the path, which is nice stonework there. So we're gonna instead opt for a charger on this wall here. Now this is a fantastic looking property, this Yorkshire stone, oh, is it Lancashire stone? Uh, looks pretty fantastic. We want a charger that is in keeping. Another key decision when you're choosing a charger, should you go for tethered or untethered or socketed and unsocketed, i.e. is the cable permanently attached to it? And our advice is always when you're charging at home, you probably want the tethered option because really getting home late at night, having to mess around, put charging cables in and out of the boot, you know, they get covered in dirt, all sorts of things like that tethered the best option. However, you know, really on a property like this, when it comes to the charger, do you want that cable hanging around like a hose pipe all of the time when you're not using it? And that is probably one of the unique points of the Anderson charger. You can discreetly pack that cable away when it's not in use. The charger offers the convenience of a tethered charger and the minimalist looks of an untethered charger. You can choose from 126 different color options with selectable side and front panels including special finishes like natural acquire wood. So blending seamlessly with the property or matching the color of other architectural features. While Rick reads the instructions back at the meter box, Ross was locked in mortal combat with a stubborn hose pipe. Maybe this wants to be a new electrician's challenge garden. Oh, this thing. You are kidding me. This is absolutely... Ridiculous. Unbelievable. So well, fixings on this side of the border, Ross. Here's how we installed the charger. Attach the base module to the wall using the template provided. We've only used the mains connection for now, but we've also included a data cable for future solar upgrades. Next, the tether charger is wired to the central chamber using the sturdy cord grip. You can select the cable length of either 5.5 or 8.5 meters for this single phase seven kilowatt charger or 6.5 meters for three phase chargers. The Anderson Evo Fleck cable is ultra flexible for easy storage within the charger housing. Back at the meter box, we've installed a dedicated external consumer unit for the EV charger, including surge protection and a type A RCD. DC leakage protection is provided within the charger. Now, as ever, when it comes to electric vehicle charging, we think about future proofing. That car turns up and your electricity bills rocket, which means a lot of homeowners' attention soon turns to solar panels. And we've got some south facing roof elements there that would be ideal to add solar to it. The Anderson charger does support solar with its external current clamp that you can also use for dynamic load management. Not going to have any problems with the load management here. We've got a 100 amp supply. There's no other high draw appliances in the property. The charger is commissioned using the Anderson Connect app. This is used to set circuit parameters and any interface with solar PV systems. The charger uses Wi-Fi connecting to the internet. However, we faced the challenge during installation due to the thick stone walls of this property, which resulted in an intermittent Wi-Fi connection at the charger location. But we found a solution to this problem using an ethernet over power line adapter in the garage to create an additional wi-fi hotspot this enabled us to improve connectivity and provide the customer with a stable wireless network connection 
even in the garden. I hope you'll agree this is a pretty smart looking charger installation. Blends in perfectly with the property, really easy to use and from our side a pretty straightforward installation. If you need to brush up on your technical regulations around EV charging, check out this video here. Oh, hold on, I think uh, Ross has left a bit of copper out the back of the van. I think we'll be uh, taking this back to Yorkshire. Who says it never shines in Lancashire?